I am finally ready to review my 2024 Honda Trans Alp, the US version. And I honestly think I can wrap this bike up in one phrase. The Honda Trans Alp is the Honda Ridgeline of adventure motorcycles. And you'll understand that at the end of this video. And I state mine because yes, I purchased this with my own cash. This isn't a loaner bike, this isn't a test ride, this is not a media bike, this is my bike. So I will give you that raw, honest owner's opinion of this motorcycle here. And you all know there's a few things I gotta have in place before I can review a motorcycle. Number one, I like my first service to be done. I like to be at at least a thousand miles. And I've done both of those here, I believe we're at a thousand eight 80 miles here. Plenty of light to medium off-road and I've gone on a road trip with long highway miles. So again, the, the honeymoon phase has kind of fizzled out a little bit and I'm going to be able to give you my raw, honest, again, owner's opinion of this motorcycle. Now, any of you that have watched my videos before, you know how I like to go about my reviews. But if you're new here, again, being a new bike, I'm sure a lot of you are, please stick through this intro because I like to let you know a little bit about myself before I get into the bike. Because again, I can like or not like things about the bike and it could not matter to you at all and again your riding style may be a lot different than mine so anyways kicking it off with me i'm 40 years old um, I'm six feet tall, about 180 pounds. The inseam, everyone's been asking for. Now from flat to inseam, I'm right at 31 inches and I am a... I don't know, I would say an easy going rider. I'm not aggressive, I don't really care for, you know, speeding and stuff. You'll never get a top speed review from me. That's not my style. Um, I love doing some off-roading, but I'm an easy going off-roader, right? I've owned a Triumph, a recent Tiger 900 Rally Pro, which I just totaled and I broke my ankle. So that plays into a lot of my riding right now. It's still messing with my head a little bit. Many a dual sports. I think I've had three or four 300Ls, multiple DR650s, KTM 890. But throughout this video, you're probably going to hear me compare this a lot or just talk about a lot from the Africa Twin and then the Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro. So right there, I hope you got a basic understanding of me and my riding style. And then again, we can kind of implement that into the bike and you can kind of compare that and take out pieces that again, applied to you or not. So let's go on and kick it off with ergonomics and again, the riding position of this bike. Again, me being right at six feet, 180 pounds, inseam of 31 inches here. I can flat foot this motorcycle very comfortably. Now I am not like a flat footing with an arch in my legs. I'm almost flat footing. I'm not gonna say stretched out, but I got a little bit of bend right there. I got a little bit of catch point right at flat foot before I gotta actually put my feet out, you know? So again, it does fit very manageable and easy, especially again, compared to the Africa Twin. Now, the cool thing is whenever you put your legs up here, again, me being right at six feet, and I do have the standard seat on here. They do sell a lowered seat. But again, my legs are at such a nice, comfortable position. They're a little bit forward right there. I got a perfect arch. It's not back any, it's not forward too much. It is really nice. So let me go ahead and put the kickstand down and you can see me, this is me just sitting on it here. And when I reach for the bars, they're just in the perfect position. Again, this is gonna play a big role into your size and what you like and how you sit on the bike. But Man, it sits so nice here. I don't feel like I need bar risers or anything. I haven't even adjusted the bars, which you can't tilt them forward or back. But the really great thing is how it flows, right? From the seat into the tank where it flares out a little bit. Uh, Africa Twin starts off big and gets pretty thin. Same with the Triumph, but this kind of just flares out perfectly there. So you feel like you got something in between your legs, you know, and it really plays into that if you're into a corner or if you're off-road whenever you're standing up. It just sits really nice into your legs and right along with the position and the height of the bars. The ergonomics and seating position and manageability of this bike right here is so nice. Now, right in line with ergonomics, the seat, it is very soft and it is fairly nice and wide right here. And you got plenty of room to scooch forward. Again, if you're standing up right here, it gets a little thin. Scooch back when you're on the highway and you got a nice wide position and this little bump back here. It is very very soft and yes you will feel the vibrations from it here and after about an hour on the road your butt's gonna start tingling a little bit so I'm ready for a replacement again the seat's not deal breaking 
but again, you are gonna feel those vibrations and your bum's gonna get a little tingly fairly quick. Now on the back end, if you got a passenger, again, that density is about the same. It's really soft here, but it is fairly wide. I, I never run with a passenger. I usually just have a bag across here, but if you do, you got these nice grab handles or again, this rack. I'm usually just strapping stuff to here. You can see back here, I do have the shad mount, which I will be putting a back case on shortly. Now on the other end of ergonomics or more or less ergonomics when you're riding, especially on those longer highway stints which I again went on like a six and a half seven hour road trip on this bike talking about the wind blockage here it's pretty darned good especially down here these fairings coming out here you don't get a bunch hitting your legs at all maybe a little bit on your knees but again down here by your legs really nice you don't have any of that heat coming off the engine on you you don't really feel any of that but where you are going to feel the wind is with this stock windshield I don't want to say it's small because it serves that pur purpose. You don't have any of that wind beating on your chest, but it does come around you and then it will hit you in the arms right here and it does hit you in the helmet. Now you're not getting buff and it's not beating you up, at least for my, my position and whatnot, but it's loud. Like, I mean, I hear it on my Triumph or Africa Twin. I always like a bigger windshield, something a little taller and a little bit wider. So there's not many replacements for it out right now, but I did buy the Honda deflectors for the front and then these little wing deals on the side. And what I will tell you is at least at speeds below 70, you notice a difference. It's not beating up on your arms a whole lot more. It's kind of flowing through. As far as hitting you in a helmet, it's still there. I think you're gonna have to get the touring screen, which is what I will get, because again, I just don't like it so noisy right there, but at least takes that beating off of your arms. As far as these wings down here, I honestly don't notice them doing any difference. I think they look pretty cool, but again, I don't notice anything different. I think once I put my bark busters on here, that'll probably, uh, again, alleviate some more of that wind flow on my arms. But I do think the wind blockage is pretty nice on this bike. The only thing I would say that needs improvement is a taller windscreen just for a little bit more touring in those highway rides. Now let's go ahead and talk about actually riding the bike, how it handles and how it feels. And the only place we can start is with these tires here these are the trail max mix tours that came on mine i believe they also come with a set of metzlers or something the ones that come on the africa twin which i didn't like on my africa twin i honestly changed them before a thousand miles and i like those better than these these tires are definitely street oriented i'd say 90 10 maybe you know i mean off road you're really going to feel this front wheel dancing around a whole lot so i already have my a x 41s or ax 41 uh, battle axes on order now as far as the brakes on a bike it's very good whether that be on road or off road and again you can turn your abs on or off as well on the back wheel or just set it to off road mode but again as far as the brakes in general really nice you kind of got that soft point and then if you go any further you definitely feel them biting a little more rather than on the triumph you kind of were able to pull it through really natural um, and it's hard to compare the brakes of this to the africa twin because it's a much heavier bike where that one would dip down whenever you hit the brakes this one does not dip down nearly as significant as say the africa twin now right in line with the feel of the brakes as i just mentioned where you got that soft point and then if you pull a little bit more you truly feel like you get a bite right there that goes in line with the feel of the clutch as well. Like there's really no soft point where you can kind of ease it out. It's like right at the end and then you let go of it and depending on your throttle, you feel it kind of pull you back a little bit because you got that release point that's right at the end. I haven't found that people say adjust this. Well, that's just gonna adjust my slack and my tension right there. I think I need to find like an adjustable clutch or something because right now I have to release the clutch super far out. It can hurt your hand a little bit after a while and I catch myself using the quick shifter a whole lot more than actually using the clutch now talking about me using the quick shifter more than the clutch on this bike every model of the transalp in the u.s comes with the quick shifter standard up and down quick shifter and the really cool thing is you can adjust this in the settings like a, a soft a medium and then a firm i prefer on soft but again i recently broke my left ankle when i went off the smoky mountains up there but the soft honestly felt the most natural whenever you adjust it to medium or firm you do feel a slight difference it's very mild mild but it's more like a clunk than anything you know when I put it in soft it wasn't like just a feather press you still had to press it down and up right there but again it was closer to get me to that natural feel now the funny thing is that goes right into the throttle right there again in standard mode which is how you're probably gonna get your bike when you pull it you can feel it pull your back I don't want to say the throttle snatchy because it's not snatchy would be like 300 L if you've ridden one of those 
but again, it has a little bite on it. Again, right with the brakes or with the clutch. Now, talking about that being in standard, what I have found myself doing is going into user mode and putting it on two power bars. When standard is three power bars, you can go into rain mode and set it to one as well. But I found it when I set it to two, it feels a little bit more natural. If you want it to feel even more natural, I believe one power bar feels really nice because you don't really feel that jerk back and that pull back where you feel like you're gonna fling off the bike or something, you know? It feels like the Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro. That's That was one thing I really loved about the bike. The throttle response was just pure. The brakes were just oh, so natural and that throttle, no matter where you're releasing it, it was just, it was part of you. Everything just felt like, yeah, you don't really get that here, but you can get that a little bit when it should get in here and adjust your settings and dabble with the power delivery. Now talking about power delivery and the engine, you really get it with this bike. I'm no mechanic or again, engine junkie or power junkie where I want that speed. You know, I want to have enough power where I know I can handle whatever comes with me on the road, whether it be passing a semi or a couple semis or something like that, getting out of a situation. And you get it with this bike, you really do. Even in the upper 80s, you still have passing power. Now, when you get up around the 5,000 and plus RPMs, you are gonna feel a little bit of that vibration up in the bars. As far as the pegs, I still got my rubbers on here, so I don't feel much of the vibration. But if you're one of those riders that sits here and kind of rests your foot against your brake, you always feel it through this brake pedal, like big time. Like you'll be holding your foot away from a little bit because you really feel that vibration here. But at the core, the power of this bike is fantastic plenty for on the highway whenever you're going long distance and you got it going 70 75 it's not buzzing it's not crazy again you got mild vibrations maybe a little bit more than the uh, triumph tiger 900 but I, I don't know maybe even more on par than i would say a little bit more so again the power is fantastic. I think it's going to get you anywhere and do anything you want. Now at the other end of that power is our very low slung exhaust on an adventure bike here. I think it's even lower than like the V-Strum 800, the new ones that came out, which sits right above the wheel. The Africa Twin kind of angles up a little bit more. The Triumph, even the 850, which is a street bike, is all the way up here. This is crazy, and I don't know why Honda put this all the way down here. But it does sound good. It sounds really good when you get on it as well. Hopefully you guys can hear this. It really has some bark and some growl whenever you get on it. Now literally, right in line with the low slung exhaust, even right here, you have these low slung pipes. If I pull it up flat, you can see how low it is here. And that's without a skid plate, which I have on order, and that'll probably sit right here. So I mean, we're sitting minimal space right there. Like you need a skid plate on this bike for sure. But it's not even just the low slung exhaust or the pipes over here. It's this little who's a mowatsi over here, which you drain the oil from and it comes out perfectly with your plug right on the back. But it's like, what is this thing? It's like I'm gonna be down here milking my bike. Now, as far as suspension, you can adjust it right up here and then the spring that's underneath the bike by your uh, seat there, which you also have a tool to adjust it as well. And both of them are very easy to adjust. I got mine on standard, which I believe is three up here and seven, no, seven up here and three in the back, I believe, or two in the back. And it is honestly, a little firm again i'm used to bigger bikes whether it be the africa twin or the triumph this feels a lot firmer you feel those bumps when you're riding on a highway or anything like that it's not deal breaking by any means and again i just have mine in standard i can loosen it up all the way but i feel like right now even though it is a little firmer than what i'm used to it's going to be good for on-road and off-road so i'm not getting those excess drops or squishiness no matter where i'm riding now talking about fit and finish of the bike i mean it is pristine top to bottom all the controls feel really good i mean the navigation menu thing in my first impressions it was very weird i couldn't get used to it i was always hitting it sideways instead of up or down but now i got used to just tapping it so always tap it on the arrows don't try to do like i was doing like i'm over here you know playing a video game or something make sure you actually tap it on the aerial arrows and then you'll be good to go but one thing about the fit and finish as far as now you see my tank bag here which i run on all of my bikes all the time this is a basic magnetic one nothing crazy no uh, abrasion on the bottom or anything but where my net magnets attach i don't know how well the camera can pick it up 
but you, you got like more or less this brushed finish there because this is like a matte finish. It's not glossy or anything. So I think with that matte finish, just those magnets sitting there and that mild vibration as you're riding, it's kind of leaving those circles where the magnets are. So that's honestly my one gripe about fit and finish. Now, again, I always use a tank bag, but I think that's even gonna happen even if you don't have a magnetic one. Even if you just got a strapped one, your straps are gonna leave marks on that matte finish. So I'm with a lot of you. I wish they would have released a white one as well and honestly you know as much as I love black and red as you can see here I love the way this one looks but I do think that red white and blue with the gold wheels just has a little bit more pizzazz and might give you a little bit more of that turnaround effect for like mm, yeah look at that you know what I mean I get that a little bit here but it's nothing that really just kind of ooze or ahs you. but I do think it still looks very good now for any of you that were here for my first impressions y'all know I just can't get any of this glare to stop shining on the screen right here now whenever you're riding again it's not that bad you pretty much always see it um I don't know if you can see right let me turn it off I'm not sure if you can see it does scratch very easy there you go you can see some of those marks right there it's the same like on the rebel or something I wish these motorcycle companies or Honda at least would start using like gorilla glass instead of this plastic I don't know maybe that's a safety measure or something uh, there you go you just saw the startup and you got multiple things you can navigate through here again my first impressions I'll go through it here real quick with you guys I don't want to waste too much time because I can sit here rambling on it now you see I'm in user and I was just holding down the mode button and now it's flashing the power which again I keep mine on two which feels pretty nice and you go up and down and actually adjust it you go to electronic braking um, or engine braking not electronic braking engine braking my bad and then your track control which you can hold up and if you hold up it'll go off your traction control and you can adjust this while you're riding you just can't be on the throttle and again hold up again and whenever you restart the key or actually just press to whichever knot you want but whenever you restart the key or restart the bike your traction control will always come back on and it'll always be on full blast so keep that in mind if you're going on road to off road and you actually turn the bike off and yes you can turn abs off on the rear wheel as you see right here abs is flashing in our user mode we got to this tab. I'm going to press down on a joystick. Now it says off-road, which I honestly prefer. It's pretty nice and natural feeling there. So anyways, we're in off-road, which you press down. Now you want to hold up on the joystick, and it's going to ask you, right? ABS rear, and then go on and tab it right there, and you can see the arrow. I don't know if the camera's focusing, but the arrow is on it, and it says off. So ABS is off on the rear wheel now. Now, everything else I'm going to show you on the screen real quick here, it does save to it. It will not reset whenever you restart the bike. And I'm going to hold the joystick to the right, and it's going to pull up our option here, the ride modes um, over here, which you can adjust right there, user, or you can just do it the way I showed you. Now we're gonna hit back. You actually gotta hold back on the joystick to get back here. Here's that quick shift deal I was talking about where you got soft, medium, and hard, and you can adjust the up or down mode as well. And again, this saves right to it. Oops, I held it back too far. Let me hold right again. You got your shift point, which is an indicator light. Self-canceling turn signals. Don't think I talked about those. Those are really cool, and they're very good, actually. Don't the turn off too early all every now and then they'll turn off a little early but they're not that sensitive so i really like these uh, self-canceling uh, turn signals uh, the display this is really cool display type so this is the one you've been looking at here that i use fuel gauge tack speed up here to three a little bit more i don't know what you want to say you got your fuel gauge up there i don't like it because the blue's always there and it just looks goofy um this one is more or less like triumph which i complained about in my main review but i honestly like it because it's just sharp and again this doesn't adjust as much as the tack on the round one so it's not bouncing all the time i honestly like this one as much as i complained about it before and then this is the standard one which probably you're getting your bike which looks a little bit more retro and kind of you got the 3d around it there anyways let me go on and set mine back to the one i prefer and again you got to hold the back button here you got your brightness which is auto which works really good actually a lot better than the africa twin you got your background which you can adjust metallic black or white i keep mine on auto it goes to black at night favorite information which are those little tabs you've been seeing on the bottom there your trip and stuff ah i want to mention something about that so hold on with me here general uh, date time well hold on something else i want to talk about here keep keep those tabs in mind bluetooth pairing here the US versions, you cannot use Bluetooth. And it stinks, because whenever you reset it, you'll see the Bluetooth up here. But in the manual of the US one, it says 
yeah, that, it just doesn't work. The app doesn't work. So it says US and Canada, the Bluetooth doesn't work, which is real stinker because it pulls up like, uh, again, your little navigation if you're going through their app here. And I'm not sure if you can skip tracks, but that's what I really wanted to be able to answer calls and skip tracks on the bike. So that's a big stinker and a big tease right there. Anyways, let's go and press back. Service, which you can set this in the bike yourself here as far as when you want your services and all that other stuff. I just do for my basic oil change. Anyways, let me back all the way back here and I want to show you something <clears throat> with these on the bottom. So you can see my total mileage. 1,081 um, fuel economy, by the way, 58.2. And you can cycle through these, right? So now you got trip A, trip B, battery, all that stuff. And you can hold this down and customize them. But but the thing that I don't really like, wherever you go over here, what's the one I have set? Uh, where'd it go? I think this is the one here. How much uh, fuel I've actually used per, which you can reset here. See, it says 12.4. Uh, but this one over here, I believe, resets each time, the last one. But it doesn't show you how much you have. It's how much you've used, right? Which the NC750X has done that. That's what the 300L does. I wish it was more like the Africa Twin or the Triumph, which said, you know, how much range you have left. It seems so basic. Why couldn't they put it here? So as far as the screen, the options, the customization, and navigating through it, I think is pretty good. At first, it was a little weird, again, with the joystick and stuff. My one complaint about it is how small it is. It's like you got all this real estate up here. I, I just wish it was a little bit bigger, a little bit more modern feeling. I mean, it does feel modern, but again, you got all this empty space up here in this tiny screen. I really wish they would have just made it a little bit bigger. Now, as far as the headlight on the Trans Alp, just the looks of it, I've heard some people say, oh man, I just really can't stand it. I don't know, me personally, I really like it. It looks good. But again, I'm coming off of the uh, Triumph where only one side would stay lit up, which drove me absolutely nuts. I think this looks pretty good. But other than the looks of it, as far as the performance, which you're not gonna be able to see right now because it's light outside, it lights up the road pretty good. The weird thing is, whenever you go to the high beam, the high beam's like just a beam straight out. It doesn't even light up the road anymore. Maybe that's just my bike and I need to, you know, get in there and adjust and angle it somehow. I don't know, but again, the high beam does not touch the road. It just shoots straight across. So what I'm ready for is again, put my fog lights up there once I get my crash bars and that will be in the mod video. That's just what I'm used to with all the bikes. The other thing I really like is how the turn signals, the indicators, they actually stay lit up on the front and the back. Just nice as far as a safety piece of mind. And now I just wanna take you on a quick little ride segment here, just so you can kind of see a lot of the stuff I'm talking about in action, uh, the bike actually on the road. We'll Get on a quick highway we'll do some off-roading and you'll be able to see a lot of the stuff i'm talking about rather than me just again talking about it and by the way when i'm talking i hope you can hear me fine again because that wind again it's not beating up my head but when i just put my hand up here it's like right here where i feel the wind bam and it comes right into my face shield so i'm not getting a bunch of uh buffeting or anything like that but again like my helmet is loud. I'm using a HAC Rapa 70 ST or whatever. It's one of the quieter ones, right? But it is super loud here because again, all that wind is coming into my helmet. It's not coming into my chest or anything. It's blocking right here uh, pretty good. It's just pretty much all going into my helmet. But anyways, we're gonna do this quick little off-road stint. Where is it? I haven't done this yet. This is using my basic loop I do with all of my bikes. Done it with the Triumph. 300 L's, Africa Twin, and again, this is going to be our first time with it here. Again, of course, a ever so Mississippi Trail. Like, what the heck is this? Like, you got to be kidding me. Like, someone just dropped off, like, a whole bedroom. Like, uh, I'm worried what I'll find in, in these things here. This is just absolutely disgusting okay we're not reviewing the trail we're reviewing the bike uh, i want to show you like in standard mode it'll be like this a trash control what i want to show you is look at that yellow light flashing it's very sensitive so uh, i think any traction control when you're off road on this bike a mattress like what the heck but anyways the traction control on this bike again is very finicky it's pretty much always engaging so again i would recommend you turning traction control off whenever you're off road just tab over with the joystick again and hold up and then bam it is off so we got abs on road let me turn abs to off road and then hold the mode button down and then it's set now you can cycle through these modes 
right now. So say if you go um, over here to standard, like you're getting off the trail back on the road like we're about to do, it's going to save and you can cycle over to user and it's going to save like that. But if I turn the key off, it'll erase that traction mode and then the uh, traction control will go back to full. So anyways, off-road, I really think you're going to need traction control off. The bike just feels so much better. Not if you're advanced or anything, it's just you feel like you got more control. So it hasn't rained here much at all. So all these, you, you all know if you've been here before, all of these trails around here are always flooded. But we've gotten no, road, no rain whatsoever. So now there's a bunch of divots in all those tracks and a lot of sand. And again, I don't like sand. I don't think many of us do, you know what I mean? Especially me with my ankle right now that's still not quite perfect. It actually never mended together, never healed together. It's just cartilage holding it together. It's that bone on the outside, that one that sticks out to the left. That's the uh, bone that broke. And then uh, you go watch my wreck video and I talk about it all there. But anyways, it's cool to see these. This is where we saw that snake before. Oh geez, straight up sand in the middle. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, the, the back tire will catch a little bit, but man, this front tire, pardon my French, but it sucks. This front tire is absolutely garbage. I can't stand it. This is so cool because again, the, these, these puddles are usually always filled with water. Now I wonder how this one's going to be up here. This big one, it should be up here a little bit. Lots of sand though, ooh, lots of sand. And again, I do not feel good when the bike goes sideways. Oh, I'm not used to going through these. I'm used to having to go around all these divots. This is pretty cool. But even other than the sand, I'm feeling these tires dance around on all these pine straws even. Ooh, 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 ooh big time there. Oh my gosh, I'm probably gonna beat this uh, to death here but man this front tire I cannot stand it one bit it is all over the place hopefully my camera angle is good uh, by the way the majority of this here I'm standing up and again the standing up position the ergonomics six feet is very nice how sandy is this can I go through it or should I go around I feel like I got to go around them with this tire no way this one's empty you know, this thing is always full. I've always wondered, well, I guess it's not empty, empty. I've always been curious on how deep it is. Frog just came out of there. You know, this thing's, look at TV, like what the heck, cold classic. The water's usually all the way up to like the edge over here. So I'm sure that's super duper soft. A little frog right there. I don't know what else is around here, snakes. All right, so let's go around that. I feel like I got to dodge a lot as you're seeing through this ride segment here. And I do a lot of forest roads. That, that's the majority of my off-roading. Oh, this sand gets real deep up here. We'll see how this fares. A again, I got to take it a little easy. Oh, geez. Yo, this is super duper soft. But again, I got to take it easy. My, my ankle, again, it's kind of tough. But let's just see how it fares through this. Track engine controls off. We're getting through, but oh, let's see. Hold on, I'm gonna get off the bike here for a second. I'm gonna leave it on because I don't want to lose my setting. But let's see here. Let's see. Okay, you can see which track was mine. Was that mine or was this mine? I think that was mine because mine wouldn't be so squared. And again, this is super duper soft sand. And it did all right. Uh, again, even other than the soft sand and how much I don't like the tires, the thing that I want you to focus on right there. Okay, I got to open the shield. Oh, I can't get the shield. Whew. Okay, I just had to open that a little bit. This is getting uh, a little bit toasty. But the thing I want you to focus on with this little, I don't know, easy off-road test we're doing here is how easy this bike is to handle. Even back there while it was sinking into the sand or I gotta pick the line, whether you're going fast or slow or dancing in sand, 
the bike is just very uh, well managed. The weight distribution is very nice. Almost KTM 890-ish. I mean, of course, a gas tank's not as low, so you do feel that weight higher up a little bit. Let me go on. Let's pop this over to standard. Ooh, a little divot. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, okay. Oh, listen to this exhaust. Hopefully you guys can hear this real quick. Oh, it sounds good. Now, hold on. Now you probably just heard a bunch of wind right there. Uh, by the way, you saw me switch the mode while I was still moving. Now I got some throttle pinned. And let me show you. So, say we go to user. See it's flashing? It's because my throttle's held. Now if I let go of it, you can see the track control just went off. And then I'm going to go back to standard, let go of the throttle, bam, and we're set back to that. So I absolutely love how you can switch the modes. And you remember how the uh, Triumph, the Triumph wouldn't let us switch modes while we were riding. And oh my gosh, it drove me absolutely bananas. All right, so now we just got to get on this highway and just cut it real quick and then uh, turn up here. All right, it's all us. Here we go with the exhaust. Not sure if you can hear it out of my helmet. Oh, the quick shifter is absolutely amazing. I love how it's a standard feature on this bike. Once you use a quick shifter, it's like one of those things you kind of need, right? It's almost like, I'd say, cruise control, even though I use, are you waiting or you let me go? Yeah, he's letting me go. He kind of looked like he wanted to go. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. Again, after my wreck, I tend to overthink a lot on the motorcycle. I'm trying to get over that little bit of fear. Anyways, here we go. Man, he is creeping up behind me quick. He's got to be in a rush. But you see me even going from first, I'm still using a quick shifter. Because again, using the clutch it's just a handful having to release it like that and you see the slight jolt with the quick shifter so again don't expect it to be like butter i mean it's very good for sure i'm downshifting the quick shift i'm trying to take it easy i'm still you know i'm gonna pass my brake in but uh oh let's get over here i'm past my brake in but I'm still not trying to be nuts on it, you know? So I'm not sure if you guys can see my clutch release there, but I gotta release it like seriously all the way out just about. And no joke, it, it becomes strenuous on your hand throughout a ride. Like you truly feel it. Uh, again, that's gonna be one thing I really gotta figure out how to do. It's find some adjustable levers there or something. But I'm going to take us on this other off-road bit, which I don't want to say it's technical, right? But I would say it's, I don't know, am I stretching it by saying moderate? But there's a little elevation change, there's sand, usually there's mud, but right now, again, it's so dry that there might not be. But you got to pick your lines a little bit more, is kind of my point. And I just want to show you again the handling of the bike, some of the characteristics of the bike. and. Again, my reactions while I'm riding it, so you can kind of get an idea and a feel of it. And as you're seeing us right there, coming off the highway and riding, it's, gosh, it, it does it. It really does it. It does it pretty darn good, you know? All right, coast is clear. Let's see these auto canceling turn signals. How, uh, oh, see, it turned off right there with that little tilt I had. So again, they're pretty good. They're, I remember the Africa Twin was like overly sensitive. And I gotta cut across. I see a car coming. But again, um, the Africa Twin, the auto canceling turn signals were very, very sensitive. I'm gonna pull my mask up for this bit and hopefully you guys can get a better sound or a better uh, experience of the bike with the mic with the shield up. All that last riding was with the shield down. Okay, let's go on and cycle over to user mode, off throttle, and you can see traction control back off. That's phenomenal. Oh, wow, wow, real dry. Some of this ground is just given away. Again, we all know GoPros don't give ground justice, but 
Whew. All right. Yeah, usually there's like water going down this and stuff. Now it's just tons of, okay, the bike just went sideways there. Now it's tons of sand everywhere. All right. But again, here, here's that suspension. Oh, lots of divots. It's not like too soft or too firm. It's kind of right there, and that's why I've been leaving it. Now this sand is super soft. Oh, whoa, whoa, super sideways, super sideways. Ha, mama mia. Hold on. Okay. I don't know. Oh, shiza about went down. Hold on. Okay. Oh, man. Super, super dry and wet. And I do this test with a lot of new tires and stuff, but I can't even, even if I keep momentum, I can't hold this steady because these tires just suck for this. Oh, come on, firm up somewhere. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is super sketch, super sketch. Okay, I need a break. I need a break. Oh, look at this is all over the place. Again, this ground is like, you know, it's like I'm riding on a beach. And again, these tires are not for this one bit. It's getting me through it. It's definitely getting me through it. Oh, my whole soul, ho, ho. Whoo. Okay, this might have been a bad idea. Oh my goodness, yo, the bike was all over the place right there. That's not fault of the bike. That's a hundred, ah, I'm gonna give it 90% fault of the tires. I'll take 10% of the blame, because again, I don't have the guts to go very fast through it. But again, the tires suck, so I don't think you wanna go fast through it. Uh, but uh, again, for me, put my left foot down with that pressure, I still feel it. And it's not the most comfortable thing. But hey, here we go. We're just getting that raw experience here. I haven't done this. I've mainly done fire roads with this bike. So this is uh, the kind of off-road I like doing though, where it's like this, it's not too technical. But it's not too easy. You gotta watch your lines and pick your lines and you got different kind of terrain. We actually gotta, you know, turn. It's not just a straight shot. This is a, uh, this is kind of off-road and I enjoy. It's pretty fun. But wow, is it sandy. Ooh. Let me try to stay in the middle, but yeah, bumpy. The quick shifter is so helpful off-road. So I've got to pull that clutch in. So even if you're watching this and you're in Europe or whatever, overseas, buy the quick shifter. It's a, it's a must. Like you can't have this bike without the quick shifter. Uh, yeah, yeah, look at that thing, it's like totally dry. Again, we've had no rain out here and all this stuff is usually full. I guess the good thing about it being dry Yo, this one's empty too. Crazy. The good thing about it being dry is there's no snakes. You all know I don't like the snakes. Okay. Yeah, there's usually water right here that we gotta go across. There's about none. So, I think the biggest thing we're taking away from this off-road test is we need rain and we need new tires. So the Honda Trans Alp, I, I know it sounded like I was picking on the bike, but I wasn't picking on it. I was picking it apart. Again, it's not a test bike. I'm not in the honeymoon phase. I've had bikes much nicer than this. But even with the nitpicks and the gripes, which I think a lot of us can agree on, again, I'm not hating on the bike, I'm just mentioning them. But at the core, of this bike being $10,000 MSRP, it's a dang good bike. It is a very, very good bike. And again, once you change the tires, I think it's gonna get us through the majority of riding we're gonna want, whether it be a longer road trip or some off-roading. You know, you might just have to pick your lines a little bit better. But at 10,000, this is a really great machine. So there we go, my raw owner's unscripted review 
of the 2024 US version of the Honda Transalp. I got a lot of coverage coming on this bike. Go make sure to watch the coverage I already have out. I compared it to the Africa Twin. Again, myself being an owner of a 2022 Africa Twin Adventure Sport, that can give you some good comparisons there. I talk about it compared to the uh, Triumph a lot as well. And then I also did my first impressions where I kind of repeat some of this stuff, but again, it's my first look at it there. So make sure to go watch that. I got a lot of mods on order for this aftermarket ones, not just the Honda ones. So so you'll be able to see how some of those fit as well and then again of course a lot of adventures and a lot of rides with this bike so make sure to subscribe and hit that bell and hope to see you on those adventures as well that whole thing just rhymed anyways thank you so much for coming by hope to catch you in the next one bye now